This is what it does to you. Like, you graduate English studies one day and you're drinking tea every day in a couple months. Hi, my name is Oscar and I'm an English studies major. I graduated here in Spain a couple of years ago and now I'm working here as an English teacher in a language school. And to be honest, I wasn't quite sure about wanting to be an English studies major until my fourth and final year, which was when we really got into aspects of the degree that I really enjoyed. But on the other hand, some other people were 100% sure since the beginning. And that kind of got me thinking about what I would have liked to know before diving headfirst into a four-year program and not knowing what exactly it's about. And so what I did was meet up with a couple of friends and we talked about our likes and dislikes and our whole experience in general. But before we get into the details, I think it's important to clarify what exactly we studied. The degree of English studies in my university mostly revolved around these topics. The first one is how to use the English language in a variety of contexts, which isn't just learning how to speak proper English, but like also academic editing, um, English for politicians, discourse analysis, and all that. Then there is the literary aspect, which mostly deals with how the literature of different periods has evolved and progressed over the years, which obviously deals with poetry and books, but also with movies and other types of media. And it's very related to the cultural aspect, which studies the history and how English culture has changed over the years and how it's influenced other English-speaking places. And then there's my favorite, linguistics, which includes many different aspects and there's a lot of debate on what exactly it is, but just let's say that it's linguistics applied to the English language. <laughs> Obviously, any one of these topics have quite a bit of overlap with other programs such as English creative writing, language studies, linguistics, cultural studies, anthropology, history. So what English study does is take bits and pieces from everywhere and applies them to the English language and the English speaking world. Back to the point now. To get a broader perspective on what the degree is and how it affects the different people who studied it, I invited a few friends over so we could just talk about it. Alex here is a red panda who is paranoid about his internet privacy and also a fiction writer who has published a book. It's actually not that bad. Paula is mostly focused on the literary and cultural aspect of the degree and is struggling <coughs> finishing her degree. And I'm the kind of person who analyzes sentences for fun and that you should generally stay away from. The first thing we talked about was how we think our studies were useful in a broader social context. And one of the main advantages of such an interdisciplinary approach to English is that we're quite aware of what led the English and Anglo-American sort of culture to be the dominant one in most of the Western Hemisphere. And because we know a lot about this historical, social, cultural, linguistic processes, we are a bit more socially aware of the root of the problem, and that sort of trickles down into everyday conversations. I now, now that I'm finishing my the degree, I think that I'm... I know that it's a typical thing, but I'm more open-minded in the way that I feel like I have more knowledge about particularly uh, English culture and literature and linguistics and so on, but also because I have new perspectives about history also because, you know, what, what is, always, is always said about that we only know one part of history, you know, what is taught to us in schools, at schools and so on. So right now I feel that I have... Um, a wider or yeah like um, a huge spectrum of different of the different mm -hmm. histories that, that are really existing or have existed in in all the times like for instance with the colonies with the british colonies and so on mm. so i think that that's one of the things that i'm right now i can like i can try not to judge at first something you know because i have mm -hmm. um, a wider spectrum of everything and and I think that I can be useful for that. I mean, with that, yeah. I can I can help people or I can help myself to understand things better and not try not to judge at first. Um, so in a way, if you know about American culture and you know about your own culture, uh, you will understand this strange 21st century that we're living. Mm -hmm. um, so in a way, I think that, yeah, knowledge is power. And the more you know, the more you will understand, the more you will help people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I think it's sometimes it's, uh, people don't get the full picture and you can mm -hmm. help them um, in your own way, um, mm -hmm. really, uh, giving them some of your knowledge. 
mm -hmm. especially as a teacher. And then, of course, there's the influence of English and American culture and, and everything else, and the importance of history, which we often undermine. But I agree with you. I, I think like that, that the most like beautiful thing about it is um, like sort of the, the new perspective that we can give, right? Like as um, as a linguist, like I, I mostly focus on like historical linguistics. So mm -hmm. like that, like you guys sort of give new perspectives in sort of a cross-cultural way in like the current time frame that we're living in. And I sort of focus on sort of the history, like the way we speak is conditioned by things that happened in yeah. the past, right? Like not only the expressions, but like the accents, the pronunciation, the, the, the words that we have, like, you know, like how like basically 60% of English vocabulary is from French, you know, that kind yeah. of stuff. Like, but and, I, yeah, I think that it's, I think that it, they are both connected, right? Like, you, yeah. I mean, in the way that, that you, you study also history, as you were saying. So I think it's really interesting also to know history from the English or the, as you were mentioning, like all the French, German influence and so on, how, how everything is me mixed you know so that's what also um, you were saying before like uh, how you know English but you, you are also getting knowledge about many other cultures at the same time mm -hmm. so in your case mm -hmm. linguistics so applied to linguistics yeah. so I think it's very yeah. interesting how everything is connected you know yeah so yeah obviously it's nice to be able to add to any discussion with you know the knowledge and facts and opinions that we have over four years of studying all these topics but is that what we're really in for I mean in my university, which is, I'm going to put pictures around here somewhere, um, we have about 200 students that come in each year, and most of them have no idea what they're going to really study over four years. And one of the main issues of this type of degree is that we touch so many aspects of the English culture, the English-speaking world, that it's really hard to become an expert on anything. What we really acquire are a set of skills on how to tackle each of these subjects individually, rather than becoming experts on one single thing. For some people, this is a bad thing, but for Paula, at least, it was a very positive experience. And also, I actually studied science at high school, so I was kind of supposed, you know, to study some degree related to science, but mm -hmm. at the end, I was like... <laughs> What the hell no i don't want it i don't like so, <laughs> yeah, i i know no biology and so on but you know it's it's cool but you have to be sure i think to know mm. because that really i i thought that those degrees were more i don't know how to say but uh, yeah that they were more en enclosed in a way that w what alex was saying like in, in english studies you have like a more open variety of things that you can study that you can learn so mm. i wanted mm. a degree that was as open as it could be, you know, in the way that I could be, I could learn, but also exchange things. You know what I mean? Like when, mm -hmm. when, when you read a book, you, you, you don't just study the book. Like this is the narrative. This is the first person. It's written as mm -hmm. um, first person and so on, but you also exchange ideas. Like I think that the author can, can mean that or can, you know, all those, yeah. all those things. So I think that's a way yeah. you, that we also have philosophy, art, and as you were mentioned, like we talked about films, about uh, yeah, comics, books, media, and so on. So it's a very, very open thing where you can learn about so many things at the same time. Mm -hmm. Then I, I thought that it was a very good idea mm -hmm. because I also love to read and, and so on. And I love languages. I was I was saying before, so I, I'm also quite happy with it. I think that it has fulfilled my yeah. <laughs> So, You're happy. Yeah. so yeah so like so like in, in general like the, the the key for being happy with this degree is to want something that's sort of a broad knowledge on many topics that are sort of yeah. mutually applicable right yeah. because like what you learn in the first degree about art history you can more or less apply it to literature which you can more or less mm -hmm. apply to uh yeah. even linguistics like you can relate okay like if you change this for this then this effect is different So yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. Yeah. yeah, I think that that's what it means to study English studies as opposed to like English literature or English linguistics or English uh, creative writing or stuff like that, right? Like the yeah. it, it's sort of a, a blessing and a curse, right? Because you study so many things, but it's hard to really 
focus on one thing if, if you really yeah. want to. Like, I'm guessing that you, Alex, would have appreciated more, more subjects on creative writing or, or stuff uh, like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but well, uh, there was, you know, um, there, there are many ways of, of learning uh, things. So uh, I, I think also in order to learn how to write, first you need to be a good reader. And yeah. being a good reader is something that you you you, you become a good reader by, by studying the, this degree. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think I think that you you do not become an expert on anything with this degree. Yeah. But you you you, you sort of uh, grasp a lot of things, and the, you will then become an expert in the topic that you choose. But you will have like a lot of general knowledge. Knowledge, yeah. I think. I think in general it prepares you a lot to. Like first, be, if, 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 be a good reader, not only a, yeah, in exactly. like in a tech sense, but like read, you can read any kind of text and be able to interpret anything basically, right? And be a good reader, not only of books and text, but also like films, art, yeah. you're, you're, like it, it teaches you to interpret uh, it in many different ways, right? That, that's the mm -hmm. main thing, right? And yeah, yeah I, I think like if you're interested in that specific, in that sort of broad knowledge about one specific culture, that sort of interplays with every other culture in the world, then you will be quite happy. But if you if you want to be like purely a linguist, then you're going to be disappointed, yeah. right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a conclusion for this part, I guess a good summary would be that we don't know a lot about anything, but we do know how to read. So yeah, that's up to you. Anyway, a big issue that we all found with the degree is that there's basically no preparation for anything else other than academic research in the area. For some that's a big problem because one of the main sources of income that we have as graduates is teaching English as tutors. And we don't know anything about that. So it's true that we don't have anything of that. You know, we, we know about what we're saying, like many things, and we know about literature and we know about grammar and so on, but we don't know how to teach it, you know, like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, if you have experience as you have and all, and all of that, but if not, you, you don't know how to apply all of, all of those, all of that knowledge, you know? So, I mean, I'm not particularly interested in teaching, but I know that it's one of the easiest or let's say yeah. the most common, you know, um, yeah. goals in, in our degree. I mean, it's not the only one, I'm not saying that, but you know, like the tip, we have to work on that. I would like mm -hmm. to have had more information, more, you know, more subjects connected to that, so. Yeah. Even if you're not planning on being a teacher long term, your first job is probably going to be a part time teacher. Right. Like you're going to teach English. Yeah. You're going to teach like language. You're going to uh, help help them with school. Right. Yeah. It's really useful considering that like 90 percent of us are <laughs> are probably going to survive as that some way or another. <laughs> yeah. Alex was kind of underwhelmed as well due to the lack of creative work in the degree. That's kind of understandable from my point of view, considering that we dedicate an absurd amount of hours just dissecting and analyzing books, movies, articles, and media in general. I think that one of the things that lacked was more creativity, more things regarding uh, creation, like uh, art creation um, or writing. But I don't know. I think that was something that was lacking. And also regarding... Um, as you said, uh, what, what does it mean to, to be um, uh, an academic, you know, to, to be a researcher, more on, on, on investigation, more on, on, on academic papers, how to write them, how to work on that? What, what does it really mean? I mean, because uh, you, don't, you don't really get the meaning of it unless you uh, are interested in a PhD or in a master in order to, to go on that, on that path. To be fair, I should make a bit of a disclaimer here because most of what we didn't like is due to the fact that we studied in European universities. And here in the EU, most degrees have to be standardized across all countries. So if you move around, your degree will be valid in any other member country. That has its pros and its cons. And the main con is that you can't have any specific skill that you'd like for the market that you want to enter that isn't in the standard program. This is a topic that's very complicated. I don't, I'm not going to get into, but I'll probably make another video on it if you want to. For now, let's move to the next question. Okay, considering that there are some, some opportunities that are lost when studying a degree, any degree, right? Because you close yourself off to another branch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, would you say that considering like 
what you've learned what, and what you've lost? Would you say that you've lost more than you've gained or you've gained more than you've lost by studying this degree? If it was a video game, it would be a sandbox, you know, in which you can do whatever you want. I, I, I don't regret it at all because I, you know, work on topics that I, I, I didn't even think I would work with. For example, mm -hmm. economy, history, I've touched all of those things. Mm -hmm. And if I had studied other things, I wouldn't have. Imagine I have choose to be a, a judge or a lawyer. Mm -hmm. I would just be able to talk about laws mm -hmm. and that's it. You know, and, uh, and yeah. that, that's it. So I think I, I'm pretty happy with the degree actually. Yeah. yeah. Although Paul and I agreed with him that it's very good that the degree taught us how to question and sort of not assume anything to be certain. There is one important drawback. For me, the degree ruined cinema completely for me, for example, because like <laughs> I <laughs> I know all the stories like you would think that you can be original. But no, like you are not like pretty much anything that you could have written was written like 300 years ago. And like there is yeah. that's like the, the, the final frontier of human creation. <laughs> Nothing is new. You can reduce it to the basic particles yeah. and it's there. <laughs> yeah, it's very that, was, to me. that was one of my main uh fears when I began the, the degree that I would get everything that I enjoyed up until that point spoiled you know that I, I, I wouldn't enjoy it the same way the music the books as a final remark I would say that the most important piece of advice we can come up with is just roll with it try to learn as much as possible if you're the kind of person that's sort of like philosophy inclined where you just like <laughs> questioning your assumptions then this is the degree for you because This little guy wanted to come in, didn't you? Yes, you do. Can you get down now, please? As I was saying, if you're this kind of philosophy inclined person and you just question everything that you're told and you want to apply that to a language, a culture, and a history, then this is the degree for you. I hope that was helpful. See ya. <laughs>